وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفوته من خلقه وحبيبه قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في سبيل دينه حتى أتاه اليقين فاللهم اجزه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن قومي ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحينا على سنته وأمتنا على ملته واحشرنا تحت لوائه وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا اللهم آمين وبعد We have been addressing the issue of the change we need and the serious need for raising a great Muslim leadership generation. A generation that changes the face of the earth from corruption to reform, from antithesis to God to become submissive to God, from fighting and wars to peace and prosperity, from discord of ethnic cleansing and ethnic wars into the harmony that Allah created the whole universe to achieve and entrusted us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Inna aradna al-amanata ala al-samawati wal-ardi wal-jibal. فأبين أن يحملنها وأشفقن منها وحملها الإنسان إنه كان ظلوما جهولا that we have presented the amana, the trust to the heavens, the earth and the mountains and they all were afraid to accept it, to carry it, to take the responsibility but man accepted the responsibility We know when we accepted the responsibility. Some atheists and agnostics and some hesitant Muslims even would say, I didn't agree with God on anything. I never talked to him, he never talked to me. He talked to others, but he never talked to me. But the Quran tells us otherwise. The Quran tells us, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ شَهِدْنَا أَنْ تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ أَوْ تَقُولُوا إِنَّمَا أَشْرَكَ آبَاؤُنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ وَكُنَّا ذُرِّيَّةً مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ أَفَتُهْلِكُنَا بِمَا فَعَلَ الْمُبْطِلُونَ وكذلك نصرف الآيات لقوم يؤمنون. So the this ayah in Surah Al-Araf gives us the story of our commitment with Allah before we were created in the form we are today, man as we know them, humans as we know them. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala took the seeds of our creation from the backs of our forefathers early before the creation. And he held us to a question as responsible creation. Alastu bi rabbikum. And we all said, yes, you are our Lord. Am I not your Lord? Yes, you are. Lest you come on the day of judgment and say, we were oblivious. We didn't know any better. Or that you come and say, our forefathers committed shirk negation of God or association of partners with God and why should you hold us responsible for what our forefathers have done it looks like a legitimate question had we not received the message directly from Allah that seed of faith is what is re- what is regarded in the Quran and the Sunnah as the seed of the fitrah <coughs> The Quran says, فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا It is the nature in which Allah has shaped and created humans. We are shaped by Allah for the mission He expects us to carry. So what is the mission? What is the amana? 
What is the trust that Allah entrusted humans that we want to entrust and pass on to a great generation of Muslims? We need to understand what is this mission that Allah created us for. Allah created us so that we substitute for other creations that either are compelled to obey Allah, they have no choice, like angels, or they have gone so far in disobedience, like shayateen, and to be in the middle, to be in the middle, part of us has the capacity of devilish behavior, that is the wicked side of ourselves, and the other side is the angelic side of us, that is capable of acting as if we were angels. Allah knew and He knows that we will never turn angels, we will never turn devils, but we will be somewhere in the middle. That's what He expects us to do, to do the balance. And this is why the Quran calls us Ummatan Wasata. You are a nation of moderation, a nation of balance. That's why Islam dislike extremism even in faith practice we have said the story before several times the three people who promised one of them to fast and never break the fast the other to stay up all night praying and never to sleep at night the third promised to never marry women because family distracts from allah and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarded this as extremism, even though it is obedience to Allah. But it, he regarded it as extremism. Holding a position of moderation means that you stick to the straight path. This is where moderation is. Moderation is not any line I invent myself, for myself between truth and falsehood. That is not moderation. Moderation is not what I think moderation is. Neither is moderation what my enemies expect me to do and be. None of that is moderation. Moderation is to follow the Prophet ﷺ to the letter and the spirit of what Islam is about. To be a Muslim means to be in full submission. 24 hour a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, plus the one that comes in a leap year. So it's 365 or 366. So don't miss a beat or a day without acting like a Muslim, speaking like a Muslim, behaving like a Muslim, keeping your demeanor as a Muslim, reaching out to others like a Muslim, doing what the Prophet ﷺ did. So what do we expect of ourselves and a great generation that we want to raise and make Allah proud of what we have done? We want a shift in the Muslim Ummah. And the shift between generation is where the shift is. You know, when Bani Israel relentlessly continued to disobey Allah and disobey their Prophet, whatever they promised, they broke. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Moses, let them get lost in the desert for 40 years. Have you ever thought what those 40 years for? It's a generation's time. In 40 years, the generation that was will be gone and a new generation will rise up. So Allah is telling us in the Quran, we need to work so that the next 40 years, the next generation will be different. So if we raise our children the way we were raised, what's the difference? There is no difference. If life for them becomes like life for us, money, business, earning living, spending money, earning living, spending money, eating and sleeping, this is not worth living. And this is not going to produce anything different. Our dignity will be in the same low level. Our might will always be in a low level. 
we will never have the power to push back against the onslaught on Islam and Muslims worldwide until we raise a generation that is different than our generation. We need to come to this recognition. We need to come to this recognition as Muslims who are responsible for the next generation, not only the next generation of people, but the next generation of institutions, the next generation of mosques, the next generation of men and women who will form the family, the next generation of youth who will become the leaders of our community and potentially the leaders in the nation in which we live and maybe worldwide. So we need to struggle and strive to imitate the greatest generation ever, the generation of the companions of the Prophet, those who were chosen by Allah to accompany the Prophet and stand up, sun or rain, whether they are victorious or defeated, they stand up. This is the generation we want. We want a generation that trusts its faith and trusts Allah and trusts themselves and have self-confidence to pursue their greatest potentials, not only as professionals in their field of business, but also as professional Muslims. Yes. Islam is a profession. Islam is an attitude. Islam is the source of power. And unless we instill this in our children at young age, really young, as the Prophet ﷺ used to teach his young companions, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with all of them, they were raised under the direction and the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ. And you see, some of them became great scholars of their time and every time after. Some of them became the greatest leaders of their time and every time after. Some of them became great business people. But all of them were the greatest Muslims. And this is the key. Our purpose is not to worry about our children's wealth or profession, what career they earn living through. Prophet Yaqub السلام, when he was on his deathbed, he was advising his children. What was his most worry? What did he question them? First he told them, Inna Allah astafa lakum ad-deen fala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Allah has chosen your faith for you, so die not except as Muslims. That was his top concern. Not die not unless you are wealthy. Not die not until you have three, four houses. Not die not until you are a millionaire. Die not unless you are a Muslim. Which means the only way to achieve this command, this order, this guidance, is to never live except as a Muslim. Never behave except as a Muslim. We need to go back to those basics. And furthermore, he asked them at his last breath. He says, قَالَ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِي Whom are you going to worship after me? قَالُوا نَعْبُدُ إِلَاهَكَ وَإِلَاهَ آبَائِكَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ إِلَاهًا وَاحِدًا وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ We worship none but your God and the God of your forefathers, Ibrahim, Ismail, and Ishaq. One God, ilahan wahida. And we are in submission to him. This is the sense of responsibility. The sense of belonging to an ummah that is meant to arouse in humanity the desire to connect with God. The desire to live a peaceful life. Not the desire to demolish each other, not the desire to control each other, not the desire to manipulate each other, not the desire to steal each other's resources, but the desire to help each other. وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ 
and cooperate in matters of righteousness and goodness and never cooperate in matters of aggression and sinfulness. sinfulness. This is what Islam is. Islam is to be always fair and just, including to your enemies. وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا اِعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ That's what we need our next generation to understand. That being different from others doesn't mean that I develop animosity and hatred towards anybody. Allah gave everybody the freedom to believe the way they like and he sent guidance and prophets for everybody to learn. Those who want to learn and follow they have the freedom to do so. Those who want to deny, they have the freedom to do so. Those who want to be obedient, they are free to do so. And those who don't want to be obedient and submissive to Allah, it's up to them. وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ What more freedom and choice did Allah need to give us so that we understand that like us, everybody else is equally free to choose their path between them and Allah. Our role is, Ya ayyuhar rasoolu, ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik. Wa illam taf'al, fama ballagta risalata. O Messenger of Allah, communicate what has been sent down unto you from Allah. And if you do not do that, you have not conveyed the message. And Allah will protect you from people. Meaning, until you deliver the message complete. And he did. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We need our next generation to know that their mission in life is already crafted for them. They need not to be lost. They need not to feel lost when it comes to making a choice for anything. Their skills should guide them as to what profession they should adapt for their life. Because every one of us, Allah has given a set of skills. You need to define those skills. Our children may not be able to do that on their own. Sit down with them when they go into middle school, high school, and start talking to them. What do you want to do when you grow old? See what their values are. What are they looking for? What do they want to do with their life? How do they want to grow themselves into this life as grown-up mature adults, what do they see themselves doing and help them? See what subjects are they good at, what subjects they excel in with little or minimum effort. And this is the area of their skills. Then grow it. And if they are weak in one subject or another, augment their effort, support their effort so that they do better in all subjects. So their improvement will widen the scope of what they choose of profession. But don't leave them lost on their own, not knowing where to go. And don't force them to choose something that you wish you had done. Let them choose the field of their choice, but guide their choices. Let them see the venues that if you are good in that subject or that subject, that's where it takes you, this is the profession it gives you, and this is the life it gives you. Okay? And those things change. Those things change. So we need to be engaged with our children. Not only about their study. Not only about their profession. But about their mission. Their mission is more important than their profession. I will repeat this again. Their mission that Allah has assigned to us and them is more important than the profession they adapt. Risk will come to you anyway. Of course, you have to put effort. And you have to plan. And you have to do all what you could to achieve all you want. But do the same for the hereafter. Your goal in this life is a short-lived goal. No matter what your goal is, no matter how much achievement and success you achieve in this life, it is a short-lived success. So in terms of your profession, no matter whether you become a president or whatever, whether you become billionaire or millionaire, this is a short-lived success. But Allah defines for us who are 
the real successful people الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون Those are the successful ones So success in our mission is more important than success in our profession or in life in general Actually the best success you can achieve in this life is to move most if not all of your efforts into a credit balance in the hereafter I will repeat this again the ultimate success in this life is not material achievement it is all achievement that you could do that will benefit and add to your credit on the day of judgment why because success in the hereafter is the ultimate success success in the hereafter فمن زحزح عن النار وادخل الجنة فقد فاز he who is pushed away from hellfire and is given entry into paradise he is the successful one may Allah make us all successful so our children need to understand those issues the value of this life versus the value of the hereafter unless they understand this clearly unless we teach them what this life is meant for and the limitations of success in this life and the real success in this life which only that which keeps more credit for you in the hereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Qarun the, the money man on the days of Pharaoh that وَبْتَغِ فِيمَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Because نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا is something so minute, don't forget it. But seek with all what Allah has given you, what? The joy of the hereafter, the permanent bliss, the eternal bliss. That is what you use your money, your health, your resources, your time, your soul, your heart, your mind, your effort to achieve. Do you know what dar al akhirah comes from what? It is the last abode. We live in this life and we keep moving. From this country to this country, from this city to this city, from this house to this house to this apartment. We keep moving. Life, the most constant thing is life is what? Change. Nothing is permanent in this life. Nothing is permanent. No matter how long you live in it, it's not permanent. Either you will be taken away from it by death, or it will be taken away from you while you are alive. Nothing is permanent except your faith. Except, except the power of your will and the commitment and the discipline you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The love you have for Allah is permanent if you keep it. But if you relinquish it, it's your problem. If you give it away, it's your problem. But it is yours to keep. Love Allah. Love His book. Live with Allah. Live with His book. And look at the difference in your life your life will be different. So our children, to raise a great generation, the first point is to define their mission for them as defined in the Quran. If you want to succeed or pass or get the best grade in a course, my son or daughter, look for the best score you want to get on the hereafter. Always compare because the Quran always compares this life to the hereafter. The Quran always gives you the balance between the two. And the balance doesn't mean that they are equal and you want to be in the middle. As I said, balance is to go on the straight path. Imagine the straight path like a highway between where you are and where Allah 
is going to meet you when you die. That's a straight path. If you divert, where are you heading? Allah is ahead of you. Yuriduna wajha. We have to want his the pleasure of his face, the pleasure of a merciful look from his face. That is what the Muslim wants. So our mission in life is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our mission in life is to give dignity and honor to our ummah before we leave. To give the next generation all the sources of power so that they live a different life than ours. So that their borders are protected. Their dignity is protected. Their family is protected. Whatever nation they live in is protected. In their presence, everybody should feel happy and secure. That is a Muslim. That is how we become mercy to the world. The world is in a very serious need for mercy. Where do they get this mercy if not from us? And Allah told the Prophet himself, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have sent you but as a mercy to the world. Are we the mercy the world is looking for? Are we the source of peace the world is looking for? Are we the source of comfort the world is looking for? Are we, are we the generation of service that seeks to serve others as it serves itself? All of those questions need to be presented to our children and they need to be party to the answers of those ch uh, questions. Otherwise, they grow up as we did and they grow up blind, weak, disenfranchised from their own faith and full of doubt and suspicion about what is going to happen to their generation. They grow up full of fear, especially if we, the adults, pass to them the fear that we live in. Then they grow up a fearful community. A community of fear can never be a community of leaders. So brothers and sisters, let us define the mission both for ourselves and for the next generation. This is the first step to establish a better generation than our own. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us as we go through this process. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our children the greatest next generation ever. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi alladhina astafa wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu wa ba'd The topic of raising the great generation of Muslims and Muslim leaders in particular is to be considered the most important issue we should live for. Because if we cannot achieve all the hopes and dreams of our own ummah, then at least let the next generation inherit that mission. Let one of them become Salah al-Din. Let another one come to be Al-Khalifa Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Let someone else become Umar ibn Khattab. Let someone else become Abu Bakr and the many other characters and personalities in our history. But how? How do we achieve this if we, the adult community, do not even know those people? How do we teach them about those characters? How do we let them have the chance even to aspire to become like them? If we do not study our own history, if we do not know what is great in our history and what is dark and bad, because we do have our dark patches in our history, our history is not, is not a history of angels. We are people. And we have to accept responsibility for whatever our forefathers have done. But this was their generation. We need to change ours. We need to change at least our next generation. But the only way to change the next generation and bring a better generation is to focus on the mission of the Muslim on earth. Allah created us for a mission. Mountains, skies, and the earth have refused 
to carry this mission. The mission of Tawheed. The mission of developing where you live. Wherever you live, develop it. هو الذي أنشأكم في الأرض واستعمركم فيها أنشأكم من الأرض واستعمركم فيها فاستغفروه الله سبحانه وتعالى is the one who created us from the earth and he let you live on it and empowered you to develop it what are we doing to develop where we are we need to contribute we need to engage we need to participate we need to make life better for our neighbors, for our children, for ourselves, for our family. We need to understand that when we say life is difficult, it is us who are difficult. It is us. When we are difficult in our submission to Allah, life will be difficult. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ he who turns away from my reminders, he would lead a miserable life. Allah does not wrong anyone. We wrong ourselves. Allah does not اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا اللهم لا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا اللهم لا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا وإذا أردت بقومنا فتنة فنجنا منها يا مولانا غير خزايا ولا مفتونين ولا مبدلين ولا مغيرين اللهم لا تدع لنا في يومنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا مبتلا إلا عافيته ولا سائلا إلا أعطيته ولا ضعيفا إلا رحمته ولا مغلوبا إلا نصرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا كربا إلا نفسته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا مجاهدا إلا نصرته اللهم انصر عبادك المجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم انصر عبادك المجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأعلي بفضلك يا رب كلمة الحق والدين واجعلنا هداة مهتدين غير ضالين ولا مضلين واغفر لنا وارحمنا أجمعين وجميع أمة المسلمين اللهم أمين أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فستذكرون ما أقول لكم وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد وأقم الصلاة